But first, former presidential candidate and co-founder of the Forward Party, Andrew Yang, has a new title this week, political fiction author. Thanks for joining us for Getting Answers Today. I'm Kristen Z. Indeed, Andrew Yang is becoming a familiar figure in the Bay Area. Just last month, he was here attending the premiere of the movie Love in Taipei. This week, he has a new book out. It's a political thriller called The Last Election. He's not in town right now, but joining us live to talk about his latest book and presidential politics, Andrew Yang. Hey, good to see you, Andrew. Good to see you too, Kristen. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Okay, so I just checked because I'm like that. Uh, but this is number one right now. New release in political thriller on Amazon. Did you know this? Uh, I did. Thank you to everyone who's picked up a copy. Uh, it's based on my experiences running for president. I, I thought I could give people an inside look and also scare people a little bit. Entertain and scare uh, because what's coming around the pike in our presidential politics may not look the way we want it to. Yeah, I mean, I'm entertained and I'm scared and I'm like halfway through. I'm a slow reader, okay? Uh, but before we talk more about the book, right, and the inspirations and your experiences, um, let's talk a little bit about the 2024 election. So a new Ipsos Reuters poll shows President Biden and former President Trump tied right now at 39% in a hypothetical uh, matchup, right? They're also tied. In another regard, only 40% of the electorate has favorable views of each of them. Take a look at this. Andrew, what do you make of that? Well, it, it's something that we all can sense, Kristen. There are two-thirds of Americans who are not excited about a Biden-Trump rematch, and yet we can all see that that's probably what we're going to be presented with. They'll be a combined 160 years old in 2024. It's not a high-functioning process. I'm someone who thinks Trump would be a catastrophe. But unfortunately, I think right now you can see that Trump has a real chance to win again in 2024. So if you had your way, what would you advise the Democratic Party do? I think that Joe Biden should step aside and make way for uh, a new generation of leaders or have a real primary with debates and competition and say, I'm willing to debate all comers. And then if he wins, everyone would feel better about his energy and the fact that people had a say. Uh, those are two possibilities. Another possibility is having a competitive primary for who his successor should be at vice president, because we all can know that if he's 82 at the beginning of a potential second term, it might be that the vice president takes over at some point in the, in the next four years. All right, interesting concepts. We should mention to our viewers most know, but you ran as a Democrat, uh, though definitely an outsider, but now you're independent. And you've written this book. Okay, so the last election, let's talk about it, right? Uh, you've written books before, but this is your first nonfiction, um, or I should say fiction, first fiction, right? What inspired you to co-write this? Now, what's interesting, Kristen, is when I was running for president, uh, people would tell me all the time to use my biography because folks get attached to stories more than anything else. Uh, and so I thought that if I could tell a compelling story about how this next election could play out, about the inner workings of a presidential campaign, maybe I could convey certain concerns I have in a way that people would actually listen to, or in this case, read, and find mm. compelling, entertaining, engrossing, uh, and learn a little something about how our system is not designed to succeed. Uh, so that's what motivated me. And I have to say, I enjoyed it more than I thought I would. Um, nonfiction is a bit easier for me, but I did have a writing partner on this one, and that made it flow uh, a lot more naturally. Yeah, no, you know, I think I accidentally said nonfiction because parts of it feel so real. Um, and I don't think I'm giving anything away because it's on the jacket. But the reason it's called the last election is that the system is broken in ways that a military coup uh, carried out by the Joint Chiefs, you know, is afoot. And, and I guess people are just wondering, is that the stuff of fantastical thrillers, right? Or do you think 2024 could be America's last election? Uh, I think... 2024 is something we should be very, very concerned about. Uh, I just said that Trump has a chance to win again for a second time, and I think Trump would be a disaster. He's already talked about how his main agenda would be revenge. Uh, what's left of American institutional integrity could very much uh, slip away from us. Uh, and you have to ask yourself, how are we in this situation? Uh, in, in my view, again, 
the Democrats owe the country the best possible candidate to take on and defeat a Donald Trump type challenger. And a lot of Democrats and Americans are not clear on whether Joe Biden is the strongest possible candidate that could be fielded. Yeah, there's a passage about discontent and disillusionment as well. Uh, it says, each generation is poorer than the one before it. Nature is more withered and torn every year. Chaos gains every year along the fronts of order. The old solutions no longer work. So I paused there, right, and really thought about that uh, possible government shutdown in 11 days if they don't get their act together on spending. And, of course, there's the Trump and Hunter Biden indictments in the background there. There's so much gloominess. So how do we begin to tackle that? Uh, you know, Kristen, we're capable of much, much better than this. In a country of 330 million people, are we really going to say that these two individuals are the best possible choices? So we need systems that actually will respond to us that reflect modern reality and practice. There is so much potential for us to make real headway solving these problems. But right now, our government does not need to solve those problems for folks in office to continue in those roles. In San Francisco, there are a lot of people frustrated with various things. Uh, and you look up and say, are our leaders accountable to us? That's what we should be changing. And if we accomplish that, then maybe we'd feel better about our shared future and our kids' futures. But it's not just as simple as the you know election reform or the two parties and what they could do, right? Because some of the things you talk about in the book, um, you know, whether it's the main characters or maybe journalistic practices, how stories are chosen, uh, fundraising, opposition research, dang, I was thinking that's just, uh, you know, if those things are true, how, I mean, I mean, I assume that's what you saw during your presidential run, right? How do we fix oh, those it's, things? it's accurate, Kristen. And if it made you feel more concerned about the system, uh, those concerns are well-founded and legitimate. It's why I wrote this book. Uh, I still believe there are ways out of this. I mean, I'm the child of immigrants. I think you are, too. There is so much potential in this country uh, for us to have a better future. We just need to upgrade our systems to give ourselves the best chance. By the way, I'm looking at one of the uh, stops that you made in San Francisco when you were running and you had those math buttons. So I have to ask you, is the tech billionaire third party candidate, Cooper Sherman, whose slogan is do the math, is that you? Well, you write what you know. And so there's <laughs> certainly a lot of me in there. <laughs> and there's some Easter eggs. Except the billionaire the part. <laughs> uh, and, and people, the billionaire part is not true, as my wife will tell you. Um, but no, we wanted to make it as real as possible. Uh, and we incorporated a lot of my experiences from the trail. So if you were Yang Gang, uh, I think you'll enjoy the book as a bit of a trip down memory lane. Um, okay, but not the unexpletive America slogan. I don't think I remember hearing that one or covering that one at all. Uh, I think I might have said that in, uh, you know, in a podcast interview. <laughs> possibly, possibly, to your handler's chagrin, no doubt. Um, but I want to ask you, look, you co-founded the Forward Party, which advocates for ranked choice voting and will support candidates of any party who supports that type of election reform, right? You were saying you guys weren't going to run candidates of your own. But um, now we're hearing, though, that you are having talks with the No Labels Party, uh, sometimes viewed as the centrist party, right? But other people who say they're just going to ensure a Republican win by siphoning votes away from Democrats. I'm just wondering what's your, what are you talking about? I mean, do those discussions include you running for president again, maybe under their banner? I wouldn't do anything that I thought would increase the chances of Trump winning. Again, I think he's a disaster in waiting. Um, so what Ford Party is doing is trying to create real choices in local races around the country. We have 36 mayors and commissioners and district attorneys who've already enlisted. We think we'll be up to the hundreds in the next number of weeks. Uh, and there are a lot of people in California who are super excited about it. If you go to forwardparty.com and just click on your state, you can get in touch with the teams and volunteers. We're already the third biggest party in the country by resources, though I'll admit there's a very big drop off between number two and number three. But hey, you know, we're number three with a big up arrow attached to us. Uh, we're focused on making changes on the ground. Uh, we're not looking at the presidential because I think if we got involved, particularly if I got involved, we'd be more likely uh, to cause something we didn't want to happen than to do good for people. But that is what no labels intend to do if they don't like the two nominees of the two parties. They will run a presidential candidate. And is that something you're talking with them possibly about? 
Oh, we have a lot of folks in common, Kristen, but uh, what I've said to anyone who has asked is, look, I personally am not going to do anything that would inc increase the chances of Trump winning. All right, Andrew Yang, former presidential candidate, co-founder of the Forward Party, and now uh, fiction author, The Last Election. The book is out this week. Thank you so much. Nice talking with you. Thanks, Kristen. Have a great weekend.